Welcome back to Sports Mecca, everyone. I'm Jacob Botter here with Corey Sanning. And we're here to tell you about, well, tell you about, catch you guys up a little bit, what happened over this summer. Of course, Sports Mecca does not run during the summer. We're all at home. So let's go ahead and catch you guys up, starting with the NBA, everyone's favorite league. Everyone's favorite league. It's certainly our favorite league. And we'll start off with the quick recap of the NBA Finals. But we're going to go ahead and go over the crazy offseason power movement, as you see Carmelo Anthony drill a three right there. Right. And so once the Warriors won the Finals this offseason, it seems like every single team in the league is trying to figure out, man, how are we going to beat this team? And the answer is apparently to add as many superstars as you can. Yeah, that's been the growing trend in the league over the past few years, and it, I don't see it ending anytime soon. We saw so many major players move teams this offseason. Guys like Chris Paul, Paul George, Jimmy Butler, Kyrie Irving, Isaiah Thomas, Carmelo Anthony, Paul Millsap. Dwayne Wade just crazy. had a buyout with the Chicago Bulls. Mm -hmm. Corey, what is your favorite movement of one of these big players this offseason? I'll tell you, this might not be a popular opinion, but my favorite movement was Chris Paul to the Rockets. Really? You have a guy in Chris Paul who, in my opinion, is the second greatest pure point guard to ever play the game because of his passing skills. You have James Harden, who's a guy who can average 11 assists a game. Houston is going to be dangerous this year, and they, in my opinion, they're the second best team in the West, but ahead of the Spurs at this moment. And both of those guys are such great spot-up shooters, such great creators. They should be able to be able, they should be able to coexist as two ball handlers, um, two step, like basically as two point guards on playing on the same team on at the court at the same time. And Harden's national position was not point guard, by the way. Right, a guy I really like this that moved teams this off season, and I'm kind of surprised that I'm saying this, but wow, I love the fit with Carmelo Anthony in the Oklahoma City Thunder. I would not be saying this if he went to most other places. I do not like Melo as a number one or two option. I don't think you're going to get that far with that going. However, as a number three option behind Russell Westbrook and Paul George in Oklahoma City, Carmelo Anthony is in a perfect situation this season. He'll be able to play the Kevin Love role that Love plays with the Cavs, which is the same role that Melo plays with the Olympics, where he provides some of his best basketball drilling threes. Like him against Nigeria in 2012, he hit so oh. many three-pointers. I believe it was eight. If he can do something like that, in the NBA, bring that FIBA line into the, into the <laughs> NBA. Playing with guys like Russell Westbrook who can find you open in the corner at a moment's notice, I love this fit for Carmelo Anthony. I completely agree. I think it's a great fit for Melo because we've seen Melo in the past. He hasn't led a team to a conference final since 2009 when they played against the Lakers. He's going to be sitting in the corner, waiting on the ball. He's a, ve he's a very underrated spot-up shooter, and I think this OKC team will be a force to reckon with this year. You're right. I love this matchup. So let's look, let's look at the NBA a little, really quick. Look at the teams top to bottom. Who are some teams you think are a little overrated this season, teams you don't think are going to be as good as people think they are? I, well, I just con I'm going to contradict my previous statement. I'm going to say I don't think the Oklahoma City Thunder will be quite as good as some pundits are making them out to be. I think they'll win a nice 55 games, but you are looking at a conference that is dominated by a team in the Golden State Warriors that don't appear to be done anytime soon. And with Melo, Paul George, and Russell Westbrook, they haven't proven to be the greatest defenders, so we'll see how that plays out. Right, and I just talked so much about Carmelo and how much I love it, but if he feels the need to be some isolation player like he was in New York or Denver. This team is just simply not going to work out the Thunder with three guys that basically need the ball in their hands mm -hmm. to be effective. That isn't going to work. Melo's going to need to be able to be a spot-up shooter. A team I really don't like as much as a lot of people do is going to have to be the Minnesota Timberwolves. I feel like mm -hmm. so many people have jumped on that bandwagon. Of course, Carl Anthony Towns is one of the best young players in the league. Andrew Wiggins has been very good. Jeff Teague is a nice addition, and of course, Jimmy Butler is the main one. But looking at that, those four players with Taj Gibson as the fifth starter, I don't know where this spacing is going to come from. Wiggins is not a very good three-point shooter. Teague is all right. Towns is all right. Butler is all right. I don't see a great shooter in there. Taj Gibson can't shoot worth a lick. I don't see how that team is going to do anything uh, close to what people are saying. People predicting to go second or third even in the conference. I don't think that can come anything close to true. So I we, we talked about some un overrated teams. You got an underrated team up your sleeve? I'm going to go with an underrated team up my sleeve, and it's going to be my Miami Heat. Now, this team, we had, they had a rough start to the year last year. They were 11-30, and 30, and then they got hot late in the season. I think this team is going to be one of the most underrated teams in the East. I think they'll compete for a top five spot in the East, and we'll see them make some noise here because you got Deion Waiters who's coming off the best year of his career. You have Hassan Whiteside who's one of the best young developing centers. We'll see where it goes from here, and Dwayne Wade return could be in store. That has been 100% true. Wade, of course, bought, uh, was bought out of his contract this past weekend with the Chicago Bulls. A team that I like that a lot of people, I feel like, are sleeping on is the Denver Nuggets. Uh, like you, just like the Heat did last year, they didn't start off with the best start in the world until Nikolai Jokic became their starting center. They traded away Yusuf Nurkic, and Jokic was revolutionary. He really proved that he might be the best young player in the NBA. He's such a good passer. He's literally a point guard in a center's body. I love the Joker so much for Denver, and I think adding Paul Millsap is huge for this team. It huge. gives them another player 
who can really pass the ball around, hit shots from basically anywhere on the court, rebound well, which is important next to Jokic, who is going to spend a lot of time out in the perimeter as a big guy. I like the Nuggets a lot. Guys like Jamal Murray and Gary Harris are such good cutters and shooters. I think this is a very scary team to watch. And I shouldn't forget about the Memphis Grizzlies, my hometown no. team. Everyone is so off the Grizzlies bandwagon. Of course, they lost Zach Randolph and Tony Allen, but those are two old players. I think they're still going to be fine with Mike Conley and Marcus Saul. Well, the NBA wasn't the only league with big major moves done this offseason. Many big sales, none other than these two, were done in soccer. Neymar and Kylian Mbappe were moved to PSG for crazy, crazy amounts of money. Jacob, what do you have to say about this? I love it. it. As much as people hate super teams in the NBA, I think super teams in soccer are something that's going to happen based on how the thing's set up with no salary cap. And I love these moves. How about Kylie and Mbappe? He is 18 years old. He's on a loan at Paris Saint-Germain this season. And then at the end of the season, there's a clause where they're going to buy him back for 213 million US dollars Ooh. for an 18-year-old French kid. This is incredible. Mbappe is so good and great on Neymar for having his own team. He's finally out of Messi's shadow. He should be good. Barcelona did a good job replacing him with Ousmane Dembele, the 20-year-old French midfielder from Dortmund. But he will be out for about four months as an injury. As long as Messi's on the field for Barcelona, I don't think it'll matter too much. And let's go ahead and congratulate the U.S. men's national soccer team for winning the Gold Cup. Oh, definitely. The Gold Cup, for those of you who don't know what that is, that is the North American Soccer Tournament. And you have the tournament-winning goal scored by Stanford's own Jordan Morris. What do you have to say about that? I mean... This is great for the U.S. men's soccer team. Of course, new coach uh, as of last year, Bruce Arena, is in. Jer Jurgen Klinsmann is out. Team's going through a youth movement. Guys like Jordan Morris, like you said. Guys like mm -hmm. Christian Pulisic, who's Dortmund's replacement for Usmane Dembele. So many young players. It feels like soccer is finally a sport that top young athletes are going to walk towards instead of football or basketball as much. There's going to be more young soccer players. And the U.S. winning the Gold Cup is great because they still haven't qualified for the World Cup next year. So getting a nice tournament win under your belt for a lot of these young players is crucial. Let's go ahead and move on to track and field this summer. Mm. As many know, Usain Bolt is the greatest track athlete of all time. Easy. But he was beaten in a race this year by two Vols for Life. Yes, he was. And you'll see it in the 100-meter men's. He was beaten by Christian Coleman and Justin Gatlin. As you'll see, the race come to a real. And they both are what went to Tennessee. And you see right here towards the end. Just a dip. Christian Coleman, only 21 or 22 years old. I believe he's 21. What a great story. Oh. Beating Usain Bolt in one of his final races. You know, everyone wants to see a great end on top like Bolt did. But it's hard to not look at the future coming ahead. Christian Coleman is so much younger than Usain Bolt. You saw him like, give the biggest hug to, Chris, to Usain Bolt after the race. He was, in awe, he was in awe that he had just beaten Usain Bolt. you got to feel great for the kid. You have to feel great for the kid. And as you see, the raw emotion during his kneel down before Usain, and Usain laughed it off as we've mm -hmm. seen, it was pure emotion. It was pure joy. You, had no, you could not help but feel good for Christian Coleman that, at that moment. Seeing the two of them as competitors is so great. Christian Coleman looks to be the next big thing in track. We're going to take a little break here in Sports Mecca and come back with some bragging rights. That sounds pretty good to me. You guys better stay tuned because that's going to be fun. We'll see you in a little bit.